I hate to report this to a lot of people who probably don't know it and would be horrified to find it out firsthand, sort of like bad news about a member of your family. You hear it on the radio. I hate to be the one to break it to people. I'm not going to say the one guy's name, but the guy that does spots with his dick, the guy that flips people around with his dick, that tiresome little fucking midget sleazy fuck. Over the weekend, and of course, uh, my Twitter got flooded with it, both from people expressing outrage and from people wanting to light me up like, hey, Cornette, look at this. For the first time that I'm aware of a legitimate star, and I know a bunch of these fucking the modern guys that were outlaws two years ago in front of 50 people in a barn have done it, but I'm talking about a legitimate star world class box office attraction has taken the dick flip and it was Mick Foley. And that actually, that started my Sunday off to a bad start. I think it was Sunday when I, when I saw that I, I really, and before we talk about Mick being involved, just here was since then, since a lot of people have been talking about it, here's two emails that I got. Of Two of the many, one from a fan and one from a wrestler, right? So I tried to pick the two because I got a few from both. And I tried to pick uh, one example of each that basically said what everybody was saying as succinctly as possible. From the fan, whose name is Gary, and the title of the email, the subject was shock and horror. Jim, I just logged on this morning and saw all the gaga about Foley doing the dick spot. I watched it at work, hoping nobody could see what I was watching. I sat with my hands across my mouth, so disappointed in Mick Foley. Professional wrestling isn't dying. It died a long time ago. That's from a fan, from a wrestler. And even though he probably actually wouldn't give a fuck, I'm blocking because he's mentioning two other people also in the business. I'm going to block out the names, right? But this, this guy... Uh, I would call him a young man, but that probably would be to most people's standards, but he broke in after I did, but he broke in in the eighties. He was a solid talent. He worked underneath pretty much his career, but he was a good wrestler and he was a good performer and he took pride in what he was doing. And he was sitting with a couple other people that may fit that description. Hi, corny. I was sitting at lunch yesterday with blank and blank. All of a sudden I see this fucked up video with Mick Foley and Joey Ryan. I showed it to blank and blank and told him, guys, this is the main reason I don't want to go anywhere near wrestling. I realize I spent most of my career making top guys look good. I'm fine with that. I think I did okay getting them over. However, this totally has pissed on how I was brought up. I can see Nelson Royal and Gene Anderson getting this guy in the ring and stretching the fuck out of him. Both blank and blank also found it unamusing. I've heard your views on this piece of shit, Joey Ryan, and I agree 100%. I get a call from time to time asking me to come do a show, and I politely say I'm done. This has reaffirmed why I stay away, because I do not want to be associated with such bullshit. And this was a guy who stayed in the business not because he was a star, but because he loved the business of wrestling and the sport of wrestling and being involved in it. And now he's too embarrassed to fucking go to a show and watch. It and I tweeted exactly what I fucking thought. <laughs> as soon as I saw it and heard about it and etc., it it gives credibility to this fucking asswipe and people who do this phony bullshit and just piss on everything. When somebody who doesn't have to goes along with it, when a star lends their credibility to this outlaw bullshit. Just because some big markets can get a thousand or fifteen hundred people somewhere that most mostly guys of a certain age group that like to laugh at all these guys doing this shit. That's the way they view wrestling as something. And they say, Oh my god, and I've gone over the fun and entertain us and express their art a million times, and I would like to disembowel the, the wrestlers who say I should be allowed to express my art. Any way that I choose, I'd like to disembowel them and string their entrails up and learn to fucking crochet to make a quilt with them because it's disgusting and it's disrespectful. And it is exactly what that letter from a wrestler and when many wrestlers 
probably articulate those views in different ways, but they feel them. And because guys who have limited talent and ability, whether through size or looks or athleticism or whatever, to get over are allowed to do horse shit like this that everybody gets a kick out of. And and they wonder why when I gave those facts and figures last week that the wrestlers have devalued themselves so much while other sports and other celebrities, other everything, Brian, in, in what professional sport or in what professional field of entertainment are the majority of participants making less money adjusted for inflation than guys were 40 and 60 years ago? I can't think of one in, in that same profession. Comparing apples to apples, football's gone up, rock and roll's gone up, fucking uh, the goddamn professional fucking volleyball tour has gone up. Wrestlers are now viewed as actors that are cast to play parts and perform choreographed goddamn routines mixed with male soap opera and action adventure delivered in a fucking amusing way to put smiles on people's faces. And per capita, except for the 10 or 15 top guys in the biggest company in the world and maybe a few guys in Japan, almost every single one of them are making less money than their counterparts were adjusted for inflation even 30 years ago or 40 years ago or 60 years ago because it has become a goddamn ridiculous choreographed display of horse shit instead of a competition that people wanted to pay to see. And you can't have the two existing side by side because I'm sorry. I'm not going to believe in the sincerity of the emotions between the two guys fighting in the main event. If in the third match, some outlaw fuck was flinging people across the ring with his dick or everybody was flying over the top rope for an invisible hand grenade. And Joey Ryan, you're in another category of the people who you're fucking fans who like to swing upon your pendulous cock. They think that I'm mentioning you to try to stay relevant, but I'm mentioning you as a public service for all the people who used to like wrestling, which are in greater numbers than the ones who currently do today, who are disgusted by you and the people who do the shit that you do because they remember when that was viewed by even the fans as disrespectful and horse shit. But so many of you have come along that now people are used to laughing at wrestling and, and, and having a smile put on their face by a bunch of people pulling their fucking pants down and literally at this point now shaking their dicks at people. So I don't do that once again to get attention. I do it to call attention to my opinion that you and people like you in the business or whether it's the guy and this is talk about burying the lead in any other week. This might be the fucking main event, but this is a side story. Apparently some goofy fuck that just signed with the WWE got pile driven or power bombed off a fucking top of a ladder through a fucking table and popped up and no sold it like Hawk popping his fucking neck collar. And he's going to developmental. They they'll weed his fucking ass out. If he's that stupid and he's about to get a chance to make some money and he's letting, letting that happen, much less performing something like that. If no, for no other reason, he should have broken his fucking neck and then he'd, he'd lose his contract on doing something stupid like that. Uh, this guy won't last six months in developmental with that attitude. But anyway, I digress. Everybody's get waiting for me to hear what Mick had to say. And I, heard, I read what he said on Facebook. And here's what I have to say to Mick. And I've loved Cactus Jack and Mick Foley and Mankind and Dude Love for almost 30 years since I met him. But here's the, the basically the reason why he said he did it. And, of course, he made kind of light of it like he does, you know, and it is a very witty writing way. And he is entertaining as, as all fuck. And I've always said that. But he said the reason why he did it was because look at the picture. There was the picture there. He said, look at the people. There's a smile on every face. And, yes, there was. Every face I could see was smiling. 
they had the same expression on their face as if you had superimposed a picture in the ring of two monkeys at the zoo flinging poo in each other's faces. They didn't have the look of, oh my God, my hero has won the big match. Or they didn't have the the, the smile and the laugh of, ah, oh, the baby face just took the piss out of the heel and boy, did he look like a dumb fuck. They didn't have the, Oh my God, I want to kill the fucking guy that just beat my favorite wrestler. I want to come back and see the rematch. He deserves another chance. They didn't have any of those emotional. They didn't have the exhilaration of watching Jack Briscoe and Dory Funk Jr. in a 60-minute Broadway with both guys fucking flailing until the end and the bell ringing with their fucking spent bodies laying in the middle of the ring. There's all kinds of fucking facial expressions you can have. You can have joy or anger or said they weren't crying when Ricky Morton was selling and hurt or when Ricky Steamboat lost the Mid-Atlantic Championship. There's all kinds of facial expressions and emotions you can have at wrestling without permanently etching in those people's mind that the big American star came over and the first time maybe some of them have seen Mick Foley in person and he gave himself a bump from another guy, an underneath guy's dick. Some of those people may have seen Mick Foley for the first time and dreamed of the opportunity to see one of the greatest wrestlers of the modern era, biggest stars. And the memory they go home with is that he took a bump for an underneath guy's dick and wrestling sure was fun. They, the memory they don't go home with is, Oh God damn the main event. The guy won the championship or whatever the fuck, any of those emotions you can have except putting the same expression on people's faces as when they're watching the monkeys at the zoo fling poo on each other's faces. So I'm not mad at Mick Foley. And I'm not going to knock Mick Foley, and I still love Mick Foley, but I've never said these words before in public. I'm disappointed in Mick Foley because I just wish, and, and here's the reason why that I think he did it. Somebody said he did it for the payoff. That's for, Mick Foley has the third dollar he ever made, I guarantee you, and he probably donated the first and second to charity. He didn't do it for the money. He doesn't need notoriety, as obviously he's got plenty of that. He did it because Mick Foley is too nice to be in the wrestling business. Because he wanted to get this fucking guy's thing over to try to help him. He, I, you know, he's the guy that never has a bad word to say about anybody, even when they deserve some bad words said about him. He was one to help a hardworking independent wrestler get over who does shit. That, uh, yeah, there he's knocking on my door right now. There's the construction going on. A hardworking independent wrestler that gets that, that he wants to help get over and give a rub to when he could have maybe picked somebody that was actually in the main event. I don't know. And done something to give them some credibility. Just second guessing here. I don't know anything else about the rest of the show, but Mick Foley is too nice to be in the wrestling business. And plus he's been in entertainment land for the last 20 years. But even that, I, I would have thought that this would have been too far, a bridge too far for mankind to cross. <sighs> Sorry. You're disappointed in Mick Foley. You can't tell me you're surprised that he did this. Cause I'm not. Uh, I, <laughs> I know, and Mick is one of those guys also that he can go a little farther than most people can go in the in the area of silly, and people still buy it, and they it it just it just seems like it works. But this this was way too far even for him. It just I just and and once again, why would you do it with a guy like that instead of trying to get either one of the local guys a, a good rub in some respect or or just. I don't, the main event guys used to know when to work with other main event guys and what to do with other guys and their level and their status 
in the industry. Uh, heels had main event bumps where they only took for the top baby faces, et cetera, et cetera. You knew how to work with people that were not on your status. And this was a case of a goddamn a garage band and fucking Led Zeppelin. So something else could have been done. And I'm sorry. I think Joey Ryan's a cancer in the, on the wrestling business. Uh, and I wouldn't say that about too many people, but this stupid spot and him is just, it's a cancer. And I think actually people don't realize how many people are getting turned off by this. There certainly is an element and an audience that like it, but there is an audience that are saying, Oh, I don't want to see. Oh, I mean, well, it, on, on my Twitter, even the people who like Kenny Omega don't like the dick guy. Right. And, and that's an example right there. I understand every single thing you say about Kenny Omega. I don't agree with everything. And I still appreciate him today. Young Bucks. I'm not a big Young Bucks guy, but I appreciate their hustle and what they've actually created as a business for themselves. And I agree with and disagree with some of the things you say about him. With Joey Ryan, it's like, I don't, I hate when he's compared with those guys. Because it's a completely different situation. Well, and say they've let themselves kind of be fit in that category also of the, the cool guys that are killing the business. And fucking Ryan, you know, me reading the internet after uh, 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 after he did this is the picture of Donald Duck counting his money. That's all he cares about. He will go out there, he'll pull his pants down, stick shit up his ass, and he'll piss on the business, and he'll make everybody else on the card look silly. As long as he gets paid pretty much, I would say he's at his hottest. He's ever going to be in a business right now. So he's taking advantage of it. But that's that problem, as I've said before, goes on to the promoters who should not be a, allowing guys to do shit like. But then the problem is you have a bunch of fucking Mark promoters that are as big marks as the goddamn marks in the locker room. What do you think if 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 somebody has a match? on their show, just as another sidebar where there is a spot where a guy power bombs, another guy off a top of a ladder through a, a table. If there is a spot like that in a match on a promoter or a booker show, and that promoter or booker does not know it was going to happen ahead of time. All of those people ought to be fired. The wrestlers ought to be fired. The promoter should have his license pulled. The booker should be shot. Never allowed to book again. You just don't let guys have that much fucking control over shit on a fucking professional show. And what do you think if even if this fucking numb nuts, Leo Rush, whoever the fuck he is, fucking idiot, even if, if he's going to developmental and I was running that show and they came to me and said, OK, well, now he's going to give me the goddamn power bomb off the top of the ladder through the fucking table. And then he's going to pop up and no sell it. Well, when uh, stopping it through the table, I would have said, no, that's not going to happen because you, you dumb fuck, you're going to fucking developmental. So the last thing you need to do is get hurt because even if I don't give a fuck about you because you're that stupid to do this goddamn shit, uh, if they remember that the last time they had somebody from developmental on my show, they got hurt, I won't get anybody else to finish my fucking dates, whatever. And for the other guy. Apparently, you're not going to developmental. You're giving it to him. You're going to be staying here. In that case, I don't want you to break your fucking leg because I need you on the shows too. So don't do that stupid shit either. And somebody have some fucking control over this shit. But they don't because people running these shows backstage in a lot of cases. And I don't care who the fuck it was. I don't care if it's my best goddamn friend in the world. If anybody running the show where a guy gets power bombed off the top of a ladder through a fucking table, pops back up and doesn't sell it, and they continue the match, happens. None of you know what the fuck you're doing. You all ought to goddamn be boiled in oil and have the fat sold for soap. You ought to get out of the fucking wrestling business because you're goddamn play acting, and you're, all you're doing is getting in the grown folks' way that know how to do this shit and know how to promote or know how to work or know how to do whatever the fuck. Because you're play acting and jock sniffing and a bunch of wannabes. I don't care whether you pull a lollipop out of your goddamn ass or fucking chewing gum out of the fucking uh, foreskin under your dick and stick it in somebody else's fucking mouth. Take that shit to the goddamn backyard or the fucking playground or set up a ring in a goddamn amusement park somewhere with the rest of the clowns. Because you make our business look bad enough. People already disrespect and disregard it enough. We've been goddamn, we've devalued ourselves to where, as we just mentioned, wrestlers make less than anybody else in any kind of entertainment or combat sport because they are viewed as a bunch of fucking buffoons because they act like a bunch of fucking buffucking foons.
you know, blaming the promoter is one thing. In, in another way, I blame the dance partner as much as anyone because well, yes. you have to be the one who says, oh, the guy says, okay, listen, you're going to power bomb me off the top and then I'm just going to no sell it. And the other guy has to go, okay. And, you know, with, with the Joey Ryan thing, again, I'm not surprised Mick Foley did something stupid, but I'd love to see him booked against Scott Steiner. You know, I'd love to see him. I'd love to see, please, I don't want anyone to book Joey Ryan unless it's against Scott Steiner or yes. someone like that. But I mean, yes. that's the point. Book him against There is someone. no one like that. There I, is no one like Scott Steiner. That would be the perfect match. Joey Ryan versus Scott Steiner. Make this match happen now. But, you know, I want someone to be the guy in the back who, when he says, okay, and then, you know, I have this spot that I do and everyone, I want to, I want to hear about the guy who goes, no, you're, I'm not fucking doing that. And if you try to do anything silly like that, I'm going to knock you out in the ring. And, and I, and I don't understand why that doesn't happen on a, on a weekly basis, except that once again, these guys are so far gone. The, the fan base that they have created for this type of thing is small and fervent. And that's since they started from scratch, never been in the business before. They, there's actually people that think, because oh, the business is a, in a golden age resurgence right now because it's doing better than it was five years ago. Or I've had people write on email and say, well, goddamn, why do you hold that against Omega? Omega did that seven years ago. Like, that's a goddamn eternity. Like, my God, you know, except on Devil's Island, seven years ain't that fucking long, folks. But they think because suddenly wrestling is better than it was in 2000 fucking 12, that this is huge business. And it's not. It's because everybody's fucking interchangeable because the only people that draw money in the wrestling business these days, and I'm not, and they say, well, the young bucks draw money and this guy draws money, that guy draws money. John Cena draws money. Brock Lesnar draws money. Few other guys sell a few tickets, but if, if you think that this is a heyday of the wrestling business in terms of amount of people or television viewers, or it, actually in some cases, even gross gates, as we just illustrated, Smoky Mountain wrestling shows were drawing 30 and 40 grand for the big events in, uh, in 20 years ago. And I'm not sure how many wrestling events past the ring of honor level are drawn 30 or 40 grand as a game, except they got 400 people. I think who are immediate family and friends out in Reseda or wherever. Uh, it, it's just, eh, my God, at any rate, we've established that a smile on every face is not necessarily the goal of this thing. The goal is emotion on every face of some genuine nature instead of derision and uh, degradation and Mick Foley, I love you, but you're too nice to be in the wrestling business because you do favors for people who don't deserve it. And it just makes other people think this kind of shit's okay. Having said that, before I go, I'd just like to say to Joey Ryan, <laughs> fuck you, pal. <laughs>